The first substantive printed book which survives from the 15th century is the Latin Bible printed around 1455 in Mainz by Johann Gutenberg. We know that printing had taken place earlier. A fragment of a Sibyllan book, for example, has been dated to 1452-3, and a series of indulgences printed in Gutenberg's type is dated 1454 and 1455. Although Gutenberg's name does not appear on any extant contemporary printed document, all of these documents share typographic characteristics linking them to Mainz and to Gutenberg's printing house, and identify him as the instigator of printing. The nature of Gutenberg's innovation is more complex than it initially appears. Central to it was the printing press, although this was more of an adaptation than an invention. Oil and wine presses had existed for centuries. We know relatively little about the printing press used by Gutenberg, and what we do know is inferred solely from its surviving output. Lottie Hellinger has suggested that the first printing presses were fixed, but by the date of the first extant image, the technology had advanced considerably. This copy of a woodcut dance macabre printed in Lyon in 1499 shows skeletal figures summoning printing house workers to the grave. It gives the best idea of both the mechanics of the press and the nature of the printing house at the end of the incunable period. By this time, the press consisted in essence of two movable parts. The first was designed to hold the inked type and paper in place and to carry both of these in and out of the press. The second part pressed the paper down onto the inked type. Both processes are clearly visible in the 1499 woodcut. The carriage can be seen half in, half out of the press, and the pressman's arm has been pulled from the handle which will work the spindle, pressing the heavy flat hardwood platen down onto the inked type and paper to take an impression. Equally critical to the development of the press was Gutenberg's invention of separately cast metal letters, movable type. Arguably, the invention of movable type was the most significant innovation of the 15th century. The production of multiple copies of each letter of the alphabet in upper and lower case, with an attendant set of numbers, punctuation and symbols, allowed printers to build up words, then lines, then pages set in type. Pages which could be inked and used to print multiple identical copies. Crucially, these typeset pages could then be washed of ink, broken up and used to make other words, lines and pages. Using a master copy of the text being printed, teams of men called compositors would select letters and spaces from a carefully arranged type case to build up words and lines in a composing stick. When the stick was full, these lines were transferred to a flat tray called a galley, where they were built up into pages. Although Gutenberg may have printed his Latin Bible one page at a time, it rapidly became common practice to print multiple pages simultaneously. Depending on the number of pages to be printed per sheet of paper, the compositors placed the typeset pages into a specific order and orientation, then locked them onto an iron frame with wooden wedges to create a form. The orientation of the pages was critical. Each piece of paper would have two forms, one to print each side. If the imposition of the individual pages was incorrect, the wrong pages might back onto each other, or pages might appear upside down. Although compositors were extremely skilled, mistakes were frequently made. This is an example of a sheet from an early 16th century almanac, discarded as waste paper because it was incorrectly imposed. 15th century printers made superb dark black inks using varnish and lamp black. The ink was worked up for use on the ink block of the press, then transferred to the type using a pair of leather pads stuffed with wool or horsehair. Damp paper was placed onto pins on the damp tympan, a parchment-covered wooden frame hinged at the front. A frisket was then lowered over the paper. The hole was then rolled into the press and under the platen. The bar was pulled, working a spindle which forced the platen down onto the damp paper and inked type. The platen was half the size of the tympan, so the press had to be worked twice to impress a single sheet. The carriage was then rolled back out and the damp paper was removed. This process would print one side of one sheet of an edition.